parser views for role-based access control. If you haven't seen an iOS-based parser view in action yet, this is the micro nugget for you. We'll take a look at what they do, how they do it, and then a quick demonstration of exactly doing it. Let's jump in. Let's say that you and I have been given a challenge by our manager to do the following. We want to create a situation where this router can be managed by the help desk. However, we don't want to give the help desk full access. We just want to give a few specific commands to the help desk. How could we pull that off? Now, I'm thinking off the top of my head, we could use command authorization with a AAA server with TACAX. We could create custom privilege levels. But you know what? The simplest way to actually implement this in a very granular fashion for that group to perform role-based access control for anyone at the help desk would be to use something called a parser view. A parser view, I want you to think of a view as a filter. Let's say somebody who logs in with full access, they can do anything they want to the router. However, if somebody logs in or connects and is associated with a view, that view can say, this user can only do this, that, and the other, and anything limited by the view will be the only thing that that user can do. They won't have full access. As far as what is a parser view, it is a filter that says what commands specifically can be done. Why would we use one? It's a great question. We would use ones to set up role-based access control. And although it's true, my friend, that we could tie this into a AAA server and make it very elaborate, we can do the entire thing right here on the local router itself. And that's our third step of this micro nugget. I'd like to walk you through step by step of implementing a simple parser view to implement role-based access control. So let's bring in R1 and I will walk you, my friend, through each of these commands step by step. The very first thing we're gonna do, because we're on a in user mode, we're gonna go to privilege mode and set an enable secret and also enable AAA new model that is required for parser views. Then we're going to enter into the root view with enable view, press enter. It's gonna ask for the enable secret to get there and poof, now we're in the root view. We can verify that with the show parser view just to verify that we are where we think we are. Now from here, we can go ahead and enter configuration mode from the root view and we, then we can create a sub view. We're gonna create this subordinate view called help desk that we can then use for the help desk individuals. When they log in, they can go in as the help desk view and get the rights that they need. We're gonna set an enable secret for this view. So the secret I'm gonna set is help desk secret. And then we get to specify for this view what they are allowed to do. This is the magic of role-based access control by limiting to what's shown in this view is what they'll be able to do. So I'm gonna say they can do any show commands for IP. Uh, they can do a show version and they can also go ahead and do a logout, which might be helpful. And then once we're done, let's test it. Let's get out of configuration mode. Let's do disable and let's enable view as help desk. We'll put in the correct password and then let's do a show parser view and it all looks great. We're in the help desk view. Now let's verify to see what does and doesn't work. Then let's do a show IP interface brief. We'll exclude any lines that have the unassigned. That works. Let's go ahead and see what doesn't work. For example, they shouldn't be able to do a show run. That doesn't work. If we do a question mark, it's gonna show us the possible options here. And take a look. I mean, an end user in user mode would have more ability than this user right here. So they can do enable, they can do exit, log out, and show, but everything else is kept from them. In this micro nugget, we've identified what a parser view does for a living. And simply put, it filters what the user in that view is able to do on the actual Cisco device, what commands they can issue. Why would we ever want to limit commands? Because we might have different groups of people who have different responsibilities who may not need the full command set. So we use role-based access control. We're implementing it through parser views. And how did we do it? From the root view, we created individual views and associated a password or a secret with those views and told those views exactly what commands are allowed. Then the user logs into that view with the password we've given them. They're locked down to just those commands. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.